today, I'm super excited to have on the show Shraddha Witness the Breakthrough. Shraddha Witness the Breakthrough is an accomplished relationship coach with success in using her self-designed faith system to strengthen relationships within the corporate and personal world. She is an international public speaker who has been trained, mentored, and certified by Les Brown, one of the most well-known and influential motivational speakers in the world. She is author of the Amazon best-selling book, Witness the Breakthrough, and the founder of Wedding Shakti, which uses her relationship strengthening skills to help anxiety-filled couples navigate the stressful journey of the path to marriage. Shraddha energizes couples to meet the challenges faced when planning for a wedding while guiding them through the process of truly becoming aware of one another, expressing oneself truthfully, and solidifying a bond sharing the secrets of togetherness that will weather the storms we know to be life itself. Shraddha, it's super exciting to have you here on the episode today. Namaste, Shadman, and thank you very much for having me over on your show. Thank you. Yeah, no, definitely. The pleasure is all mine. I'm super excited to have you on the show. And before we kind of delve into the topic I want to discuss today, so Shraddha and I, we met as part of an online podcasting forum. And we just briefly exchanged communication and it was just super awestruck when I saw, you know, the life story that you've had, Shraddha, and the, you know, the philosophy about relationships that you've been able to create in the faith system and just the philosophy behind witness the breakthrough that now you've incorporated into your relationship and marriage counseling services. So I'm super excited to talk to you. You know, this podcast is about relationships at large and, you know, why not? delve into the actual romantic relationships that we have in life, whether it's a partnership, a marriage, um, you know, just starting out in the dating world, any of all these romantic relationships I'm super excited to talk to you about today. And so one of the things that I really have been intrigued by lately is, you know, how to express yourself honestly in a romantic partnership, I think. And I know you've discussed this many a times throughout, you know, your own services is that you know, it's very hard for us at times to be able to vocalize what we're truly thinking and feeling in the moment to our partners. And so I wanted to learn a little bit about your experience, um, personal experiences, as well as your experience as a relationship coach, helping people vocalize and honestly express what it is that they want, they feel in romantic partnerships. So before I go ahead and dive deep into, you know, this topic today, I want to go ahead and allow you to kind of maybe introduce, you know, maybe a little bit about, you know, the backstory that came with the genesis of, you know, witness the breakthrough and the faith system. Thank you very much, Shadman. Witness the breakthrough actually was uh, given to me by Mark Zuckerberg. Actually, Facebook has uh, given this name to me. And I love your question because you have started uh, right where my journey began. On the 20th of May, 2015, When my mother-in-law got up to beat me and I could take no more, I decided not only to help myself, but help others by taking that leap of faith. And if you ask me what took me so long, what kept me silent and made me live like a dead soul in a moving body for more than two decades, it was my faith. It was my faith. And I had used this faith to help others, to help my husband, my family, and everybody else. But I had never had the courage to use that faith on myself. And most people continue to do for others, sabotaging themselves, just as I did. So when I dropped both my names, my family name, as well as my marital name, and I decided to start an account after banks began to invite me, on Facebook. At that time, Facebook was asking for a last name. Today, it doesn't. And since I was witnessing my own breakthrough, Shadman, I wrote Shadha witnessing the breakthrough, shortened it for WTV and pressed enter. And lo behold, Facebook questioned my name. So I had Shadha WTV there. And every single day after meditation, I began posting these four lines. And somebody from the Les Brown Institute in America, now this is happening in Mumbai in India, only one person is liking it from the bank because he had asked me, ma'am, what should I do when you leave? Uh, We want to stay on course and can you help us? 
So I used to just post these four lines and one person used to like it. About four or five people were following me on Facebook and somebody from, from America was like, you know, following these every single day. And after seven months, they call me and they, they interview me and I become the first founding member from the, of the Les Brown Institute from India and go on to become their first world ambassador. And when I go there and meet Mr. Brown, he says that we will name your book after hearing the story, Witness the Breakthrough. And he wrote the foreword. And this happens to be the first foreword because I'm the first Indian to be publicly endorsed by Les Brown. So that's the story about Witness the Breakthrough. And then because my faith got me that far, I designed the faith system and acronymed it for F for focus, Shadman. A for accountability, I for invest, T for thoughts, and H for hunger, which is, uh, you know, if any one of you who are listening to this podcast know a little bit about Les Brown, he says, you've got to be hungry. So when you are actually focusing on yourself, holding yourself accountable and investing your time wisely, changing your thoughts from negative thoughts to positive ones and staying hungry, then you become unstoppable and you have that faith to overcome every adversity, especially in times like COVID when life is throwing a curve ball at you every now and then. It's hard. It's not easy. It's hard. But this faith stays intact when you know how to keep it intact. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I'm super glad that you were able to share that background because I think the audience has a little bit more clarity, you know, your own story of, you know, going through a particularly difficult hardship in, you know, marriage and then having to find that strength, that self-empowerment to get out of that sort of situation and to be able to give power to your own individual journey and expression. I'm super, super glad you shared that story. And it's something that I think a lot of individuals may be going through. I personally have gone through that where you don't necessarily feel as if you can give yourself that, you know, self-empowerment. So I'm super glad, you know, that you were able to find that as well as now be able to help share that journey and help people find that empowerment within themselves. So I'm super excited to delve a little bit deeper into the topic about how to manage this sort of self-empowerment when it comes to, you know, honest communication and partnerships. So, you know, another facet of yourself, Shraddha, is the fact that you're a relationship and marriage counselor. So I'm curious to kind of understand from your experience coaching different partnerships and different marriages, you know, I get the sense that when you're in a partnership, you're in a marriage, you oftentimes will think that you're one unit. And so as a result, there's a hesitancy of wanting to rock the boat or the image of that idea of being one unit. And that leads to sometimes partners not wanting to speak up about their experience, about their own thoughts and emotions. So how much have you found personally through your time coaching that that idea of being one unit in a partnership plays into not speaking up? And that is the biggest misconception because the, uh, the most difficult feeling today in the world, in humankind is expressing yourself and the feeling of being misunderstood because you want to say something and something else is being understood. So that mm-hmm. gap, that misconception actually is the biggest fallacy of a breakup in a relationship. And when I encourage my coaches and people who come to me, I am telling them that just be yourself and feel that freedom of expressing yourself. Because if you cannot be yourself, like uh, someone wise has said, that you can give from your overflow. So every relationship, if you categorize them into four segments, would be romantic relationships, business relationships, family relationships, and relationships with friends, colleagues, people you meet like at the grocery store, people mm-hmm. you just meet in life, maybe on an, on an aircraft or somewhere. So those kind of relationships. Now, 
for all of those four types of relationships shadman one has to first focus on your self relationship if you yeah. are in a good mood if you are comfortable in your skin if you are in the now then you are able to express yourself better and in that romantic relationship when you want to be that one unit it is imperative for you to just be yourself without the fear of judgment but most people will get engaged in that negative talk about themselves and fear being judged and that's why they are unable to express themselves with the you know the burden of considering it to be one unit and keeping mum and that is where the spiral down begins that is where everything starts going down because now you are not able to express yourself and then things erupt like a volcano but before we go to through these five relationships i also go on to talk about the most exquisite expression of self awareness which is relationship to the moment relationship to the now so once you are in the now for example we are talking and we are creating something that will help people who listen to this podcast if i am not answering your questions or if you are not asking me something relevant that is the relationship in the now then that ripple that synergy is not created so today even this relationship is one unit which has to be together so just the fact that you make me comfortable to ask me questions that are relevant to me and that i am answering something that is relevant to your listeners this is also one unit so when you consider the moment to be the unit with you the moment that the universe has given you and then move on to that self relationship that is also one unit when you begin to take yourself a little bit more gently and stop being harsh on yourself because we are human we do commit mistakes and then mm-hmm. move on to the romantic relationships and further on to the other relationships wherein you are a unit and you are in a relationship because it takes two to create a relationship otherwise you mm-hmm. would have just been on your own with the now mm-hmm. yep so if you are with somebody then of course you are a unit and why not feel free and comfortable to flow in that time when you are together Yeah, no, I couldn't have put it any better. I'm super, you know, when I when I heard you kind of mention that people often think of the unit being or rather the unit having to be within themselves because I think the word that misconception and maybe you might be able to kind of um attest to this is the fact that they think that the unit is kind of you know, outside of them. It's an extra extra ter- terrestrial kind of force if you want to call it it's really not it's a matter of it's there between two individuals but really like you were saying the moment is in with yourself and so i think that is something that is super important i think it's a matter of rewiring and reframing how you see that unit so uh, i'm super glad that you brought that up and i think that's a really great great way to reframe your mind when it comes to that and i think that'll help people open themselves up like you were mentioning if you can't authentically be yourself then there really is no foundation to work off of in that relationship and so kind of kind of leading off of that you know so, sometimes i find and this is even an issue that i've faced in my life is where sometimes people are a little bit more quiet shy introverted in nature and they don't have an inclination to speak up or they like to process things a little bit longer than others and so it's a it's a disconnect right when someone is a little bit more outgoing or talkative and they they come to terms with you know or they face up with someone who's not like that so they're thinking or oh, they're not saying something um but whereas the matter of the fact is they just need more time to process but sometimes they're also just afraid of vocalizing what it is that they feel and they want to say so what, how do how have you helped those individuals like what are some tips that you would give to those individuals to finally speak out in respect to that fear that they have being someone who's more quiet more introverted in these types of relationships and find that power in their voice brilliant question because most people will think that it is the issue with them finding their power voice whereas i 
introduce them to questions like, why are you even together? If you know that why, that why are you even together? For example, this girl who came to me and she is with her boyfriend and she was in a mess. Every week, like she would, when she would come for the coaching sessions, she would always crib about why doesn't he understand and can't he just understand this much? And is it so hard? And I was like, do you really want to be with him? Tell me this first. If first we got there in a couple of uh, coaching sessions, that she realized that, yes, I mean, she hasn't been able to stay in a relationship for more than a month or two or three months. And it was really getting hard for her. And she was trying to carry all that baggage of hurt and heartbreak into this relationship. So firstly, mm -hmm. to get that self-awareness of why you are even together with this particular person that you have so much discrepancy about and that you have so much, you know, uh, sort of disillusionment about. So mm -hmm. now when she got to terms with the fact that, yes, she knows why she's with him because he loves her, then everything started falling in place. And then I said, now if we don't, like she said, I, he doesn't like to cook. And um, I do like to cook, but at times I feel very low on energy because of this lockdown and being on screen time. And I cannot, uh, you know, express myself to him at times when I want him to just prepare a meal and, you know, both of us can eat. Mm -hmm. So this is something that she had to convey to him. But she wasn't finding a way. And when I made her realize uh, by, her, by questioning her over the coaching sessions that why are you even together and is it important for you to stay together or you want to just keep fighting with him and keep quarreling and you know, keep sulking about all of it and go even further down in your energy. And then she realized, yes, it's important for me to tell him. And then she found a way. She wrote lovely, beautiful notes and made it so creative and romantic that he actually you know, wrote to her back saying that, okay, the dishes are mine and the cooking, I'm going to you know, serve you breakfast in bed. So now see, it, the, the main issue here is that couples will not even know why they are together. They are just together because they are meant to be together or because it adds thrill and excitement just by having someone but not in the real sense. And now, especially after the pandemic, Shadman, the people who are coming to me are done. They are done. And even otherwise, now people are looking for real relationships, real conversations, real moments. There's so much struggle in everything else. The only thing that you can actually fall back on is relationships. Yep. And if that also cannot be real, then what else is there? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I, you know, I think at this time with the pandemic, I, I, I personally have even found that where like you reassess your relationships and, you know, with romantic relationships, I think there's a lot of like you were mentioning the true base of why you're in this relationship in the first place is really starting to bubble up. And like you're mentioning, you just have to get straight to the, the heart of the matter and figure out is there some other driving force that's causing us to be together, some external kind of image or idea, or is there really some sort of substance? Like, no, there's a real reason. And, and in reality, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is there would be no question in the first place. If you're questioning it, then there might be something that already is externally influencing that relationship in terms of where it started in the first place. So, you know, I think, this is kind of one of the reasons with this pandemic, I also even started this podcast to try and reassess our relationships, understand better into, you know, what makes them tick, what, what me, what does it mean to have an authentic, real relationship? So, you know, I think this will be really helpful for those going through a romantic relationship currently, or those who are looking to, you know, find a romantic partner sometime in the near future. That will be a great starting point so that you don't have to deal with that issue of something bubbling up or, you know, some external image kind of overcasting over that relationship. So I couldn't have, you know, said it better than what you've said, Shraddha. And so one of the other questions is I have is, you know, we looked at it from one side of the equation. So when there's two individuals, how do we kind of get both individuals on board and create a sort of environment to foster emotional honesty with one another? Because sometimes you'll find is, 
maybe, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's always kind of shifted one way or the other. One person will actually vocalize his or her own opinions and the other person may not. How can both people kind of cultivate that sort of environment to, you know, foster a great relationship um, in terms of the prospect of it going on for, you know, forever? When you're together for love, when you're together for love, do not give up on love. And not necessarily every expression of love is vocal. Love is not a decision or an action. Love is something that you imbibe in everything that you do. So whether you're vocal or not, I see, one cannot change a basic nature of somebody. Yes, change is the only constant, constant and both people evolve in the relationship. But when you are together for love, Look at those couples who have been holding hands for 70 years. I, it's so beautiful. And haven't they had their own share of struggles for whatsoever reason? But they are together and they have been like childhood friends and they are still together through all of it. They have seen their own. Like I was just having this conversation with somebody and I said, uh, they were talking about their parents and uh, they said, our parents are together and it's been so many years. And I was like, yes, uh, they were young when, India was uh, getting their independence in 1947. They may, they may have just been uh, like, you know, a very young and playful at that time. But that time there, there were struggles too, just as today there are in this pandemic. But they found a way, even if they weren't together with each other, but they, even when uh, there were emergency strikes or whatever has happened earlier in the world, people have found a way. But today, the blame games don't stop. The blame games don't stop. So it's not about you or I, it's about us. And your podcast is also between us. So I love that name. So when you are together for love, Shadman, everything starts falling in place. Because now you know that love is the most powerful emotion that's there in this world. With love and hope, the world you know, thrives, not only survives, but it's just because of love. Today, we are talking because of this love in the universe that, yes, we want to help people. So uh, just look at the beauty of you know, uh, the virtual world today. Had this not been there, would this have been possible? And so when you start counting your blessings and when you are grateful to even have a partner and have that luxury, of being together for love, then whether one partner is doing it vocally and the other is doing it in a different way, everything becomes acknowledgeable. But just by put, putting it into words and uh, you know, overlooking the gestures, that's not fair. Yep. I think, yeah, that was one of the other, even for myself, the misconceptions, like you were mentioning, it's really more so a matter of acknowledgement versus actual vocalization. Because like you mentioned, everyone has their own forms of expression and it doesn't always have to be necessarily vocal. So really being able to, and that's where like the real root of love comes from is that acknowledgement of someone's expression and being able to reciprocate in a way that makes them feel comfortable, makes them feel safe and respected. So, you know, I think that's a great takeaway from here, you know, just seek out, acknowledge, seek out that sort of acknowledgement from your other partner and give that acknowledgement to your other partner as well. And that'll be the basis of love. So I'm super, I'm super glad that you mentioned that. And, you know, that's even reshaped my own, you know, narrative around love. So I'm glad that I was able to kind of learn something from this as well. And so, um, I want to also be respectful of your time. There, there, we finish each and every single episode with a final segment called the three keys to relationships, which is where we ask guests three questions about relationships and all relationships in general. So like those four or five different relationship categories, these questions pertain to. And so I'm kind of curious to hear your own philosophy around these kind of questions that aim at your own philosophy on relationship management. So the first question I have is, What's your number one relationship red flag? My number one relationship red flag would be being in the now. Not the future, not the past, but being in the now. Make the most of now. 
the pandemic has given us this reason this compelling reason to even think that are you really making the most of the now or are you yet waiting for something to happen sometime or are you yet stuck that this is not the way it could be or that happened then be in the now and make the most of the now beautiful the second question i have is kind of the converse of that what is the number or what's the most underrated quality you feel when it comes to relationships togetherness the fact that you even have someone it's rare it's rare there are so many people in the world who are single when they come to me they are yearning for a partner they are yearning they are longing for someone in their lives you have somebody togetherness is the most underrated thing there are so many people who are forced into long distance relationships because of the pandemic they cannot meet their loved ones whereas you people who are together who have somebody in their lives even if it's a long distance do you even care yeah i think that's something that we this pandemic has definitely put that really under the microscope being able to be grateful for the fact that you do have someone or some you know group of people in your lives so that's a great great way to kind of reshape your identity around relationships so you know that was a really great answer i love that answer and the third and final question i have is um what's your what would be your relationship mantra or slogan when it comes to how you approach relationships so kind of to give context this podcast between us the mantra that we follow here is we don't make relationships but we make relationships better so i'm kind of curious to hear what would be your own kind of slogan or mantra do not give up on love can us yeah we all go through our struggle, struggles shadman everyone has their own unique story everyone and that is life see life is it's it's up and down up and down it's on a straight line mm-hmm. when it becomes a straight line there's no life so everyone has their own struggles but through all of it and that's why there's a quote in my book that i say the fall the rise the resurrect the demise are inevitable as we keep sailing through get up get going and never ever give up on you and you cannot give up on yourself when you don't give up on love So my mantra would be to your listeners do not give up on love. Hey everyone, my name is Shaman Raman and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel today. I hope you found this episode of the Between Us podcast enjoyable and that you're walking away feeling entertained, inspired, and or motivated. If you particularly enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and smash the like button down below and leave your thoughts in the comments section. And if you'd like to go ahead and keep up with the podcast, go ahead and follow our social media. And please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. So that way you can find out about new episodes as soon as they're released. Until next time everyone, take care and we'll see you all in the next episode.